Epicurus believed that our reactions, not external events, shape our emotions. No matter how hard you try to help others, if they lack the motivation to change, it will be in vain. Your willingness to be there for others is a rare trait in the modern world. Sometimes your willingness to support others can lead to positive outcomes and bring about change in their lives. However, it's important to understand that you cannot force someone to change if they don't want to. Change must come from within and from their own desire. Before you embark on a confrontation with difficult challenges, let patience clarify you more clearly. Through this video, we will convey valuable lessons on recognizing strong signals that indicate you're approaching your ultimate goal. Don't rush through. Watch until the end to gain a clearer understanding before taking action. Today, we will discuss 10 different types of people who, for various reasons, do not want to be helped and often need to face challenges on their own. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we delve into the first type of person, so you don't miss important information. Type of person number one, folks who never admit their mistakes. These individuals do not like to admit they are wrong, which shows that they truly do not introspect or behave humbly. These qualities are considered very important for personal development by philosophers like the Stoics. People of this type always claim it's not their fault. They may tell you that you're just being unlucky. Instead of blaming others, what's important for them is to acknowledge when they make a mistake and learn from They don't think before they act and they don't realize how their actions can affect others. If things don't go as planned, they often blame something or someone else never themselves. They believe their choices don't impact others, or worse, they simply don't care about the consequence. The truth is, it's very hard to help them because they don't want to admit their faults. If something bad happens due to their decisions, they always think it's not their fault. You often hear them say, I didn't do that. If you think you can help these people become better by teaching them humility, you might be wasting your time. When every situation becomes complex and challenging for them, they always seem unable to avoid the habit of blaming others or external factors. If they fail an exam, they often blame the teacher for not taking responsibility for themselves. In the case of a car accident, they often act nonchalant and blame the weather or some unforeseeable factor, while in reality, they might have been careless. For a messy house, they often impose reasons for their work and don't look at their own negligence. We think it's best to step back. If you keep trying to show them a better way and they resist, it's not worth your efforts. They often just make excuses and may try to drag others down with them. It's better to keep your distance while you still can. Type of person number two. Individuals who think it's never their fault. These people always find ways to point fingers at others and never self-reflect. This contrasts with the idea that we should focus on how we react to situations, not the situations themselves. If we don't control our reactions, our emotions can dominate, leaving us confused. So the question here is, how do you help someone who thinks all their problems are caused by others and they don't see their own faults? If they don't recognize the reasons they might have done something wrong, they will never try to become better because they believe they are already the best. Some people always point fingers because they don't see their mistakes or simply choose not to see them. They think that if they lack friends, others must be responsible. If they're not healthy, they believe good food is expensive. If they miss a good job opportunity, they think the interviewer had it out for them. The best help you can provide is to let life teach them. Eventually, they may recognize the real issues. Imagine you have a friend named John who constantly complains that all the failures in his life are caused by others. John often blames society, work and friends when things don't go smoothly. He never self-reflects and doesn't take responsibility for his decisions. One day, you come across an exciting career opportunity and start working hard to achieve your goals. Meanwhile, John continues to blame everything around him. However, you realize that the change comes from how you behave and self-reflect. Finally, after a long time, John begins to realize that he needs to change his approach to life and work. He starts self-reflecting and takes responsibility for his failures. John begins to learn how to control himself and sees improvements in his life. Opportunists Understanding others deeply is a rare and beautiful human trait. Stoics believed in seeing the world with empathy, feeling others' emotions without judgment. However, beware of those who misuse this kindness. Some individuals see it as a weakness and pretend to be friends just to exploit you. How to recognize them? Watch their actions. Real friends ask for help when truly needed. 
while these individuals often ask for regular favors, even for things they could handle on their own. Some people know how to make you feel guilty. At first, they might say, you're a great friend, can you do? It's okay to ask for help sometimes, but these people always ask even if they can help themselves. They don't care about your time. It's sad because even if you don't want to help, you end up doing it. They make you feel bad if you say no, even if you've saved them many times. They don't change. They think it's okay because someone will always help them. We suggest you choose to stay away from such people and not feel bad about it. Remember, you only need to worry about yourself and what you've promised to do. Type of person number four. People cloaked in self-made illusions. Some people trick themselves with their own made-up stories. This doesn't match the Stoics' advice to honestly look at ourselves and be real. It's like hiding problems. Stoics say we should face our mistakes to grow. The big problem with these people is they believe their made-up stories so much they ignore what others see. They don't get that our minds can twist the truth. Seeing things based on our feelings rather than how they actually are. Often, they're not trying to be harmful. They're just trapped in their habit of fooling themselves. It could have started during a difficult childhood and their need to belong could have shaped their perspective. These challenges might have pushed them to craft a comforting reality. Helping them is tricky since they've built such a strong mental wall. You might try to convince them that the earth is round, but they'll argue back with reasoning that's flat. Even when you show them the obvious, they'll twist it to fit their view. They'll only really change if they realize their thinking is off, but this often needs expert psychological guidance. This reminds us of current political debates where people stick to their side, ignoring logical gaps, and even if they end up contradicting themselves, they think they're right. Those stuck on life's negatives. Some people always see the glass as half empty, which is different from the classical mindset that ancient thinkers valued, which is calmness and facing difficult times with strength and gratitude. The important thing is that you need to be aware of both the positive and negative aspects of life to maintain a balanced mindset. Everyone has bad days and feelings of anger or sadness, but it's another thing to focus only on the negative and overlook the beautiful parts of life. This action only brings more darkness into your life and prevents you from seeing the beauty of the world. There are people who specialize in focusing on the negative aspects and you will gradually realize that helping them becomes a losing battle. When they share their difficulties, you naturally want to help, but it seems like they have a new problem for every answer you provide. Their negativity can start affecting your mood. It's like watching the news on TV can feel like opening the door to a vast world where most stories revolve around ongoing disasters. From reporting on terrorism in distant regions to the increase in wildfires and natural disasters everywhere, the world seems to be constantly haunted by difficult events and risks. Even news often revolves around social issues such as slow economic growth, political conflicts, and environmental controversies. After proposing many solutions, you begin to think that maybe they don't want help. They just like to complain and seek attention. They may even be unhappy if all their problems suddenly disappear because they seem to like having a messy array of issues to talk about. Some people seem to always talk about their problems as if that's all there is to life. They always mention financial problems, issues with their children, relationships with partners, or disappointment in their jobs. Do you believe that you can truly make a difference for people who complain about every aspect of their lives? And do they really want help? It's probably best not to try if you want to maintain a positive spirit and energy. It may be better for them to find their own way. Hopefully, over time, they will learn to be less negative. Instead, use your energy for those who truly appreciate your advice and want to improve. Otherwise, you may end up becoming negative like the friend you tried to help before and you won't even realize it. A type of person number six. Those people who are betrayers. Betrayal is like when someone you trust breaks your trust. It's like a friend revealing your secrets. Dishonesty means not telling the truth or telling lies, both of which can harm a relationship. Some people have a history of dishonesty or betraying the trust of others, leading to suspicion and resentment from others. They may have performed untrustworthy actions in the past, and sometimes others find it difficult to trust them. This issue poses a significant challenge in relationships because trust is the crucial adhesive that holds a relationship together. If someone has a history of betraying the trust, rebuilding their trust is like trying to build a house with bricks without assurance of stability and safety. The risk of collapse is always present. This may require time, effort, 
and patience to overcome the consequences of betrayal and rebuild the relationship stronger. If you are dealing with someone with a history of betrayal or dishonesty, caution is important. You can set clear boundaries and let them know what you expect in the relationship. Trust needs to be rebuilt slowly and step by step. Trust is precious like a gemstone. It is essential to protect it and not give it away too easily. Surround yourself with people who have a history of reliability and honesty to have a strong and healthy relationship. Individuals expecting the world to favor them. There are those who expect the world to favor them. Some even feel that the world should fulfill all their desires. They believe that just by living, they are already exceptional. Stoic philosophy tells us that we should live in harmony with the world and others. They believe that respect and rewards must be earned. Some kind-hearted individuals want to help these people see the world differently, but often these individuals don't see that guidance as a good deed. They may even feel threatened. Some think that because they look good, others should work for them. This attitude makes helping them difficult because they are often taken advantage of. Some believe they deserve special attention when things don't go their way. Even with those who have helped them, they pretend to be hurt and may manipulate the situation. They may only realize the need for change when they face behavior similar to what they have exhibited. Let's dive into the story of Alex and Jack. While Alex always expects everyone around him to serve his desire and considers himself special, in contrast, another person named Jack adheres to Stoic philosophy. Jack respects others and believes that respect and rewards must be sought and earned. One day, Alex and Jack both applied for a job at the same company. Jack truly valued the job and worked hard to achieve success. In contrast, Alex expected the company to provide the best conditions for him without contributing much. As a result, Jack received recognition and promotion while Alex faced difficulties and dissatisfaction. Jack showed understanding and was willing to help Alex, but he refused and continued to expect something to be done for him. In the end, Alex realized the need for change when he faced a reflection of the attitude he had shown. This story shows us that Stoic philosophy can help us live a more meaningful life by respecting others, work diligently, and face reality with clarity. Type of person number A. Who don't plan ahead? Imagine seeing an important friend of yours not using their talents, and you can't change that. It's a challenge when you try to remind them that moments in life are passing by and they seem not to care. You believe they could achieve more than they think. Indeed, enjoying today is the key to happiness, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't have goals for tomorrow. What we do today shapes our future. We truly feel happy when we use our natural skills and learn to make our lives better. Some people can only see what's right in front of them. It's not that they lack skill. The important thing is they don't think about how to use them for the future. They have talents in many areas. The best way to help them is not to teach them new skills, but to encourage them to apply what they know. Sometimes they just need to take action. They're aware of their potential and what they can achieve. But if they always rely on help and don't take action themselves, it's difficult for you to foster growth in them. Maintaining such a state keeps them from advancing further. Ancient philosophers believed that working for a better life is good. Otherwise, negative emotions can dominate. Anxiety, affecting many people today, is one of those emotions. Epic person number nine, people who only think of themselves. These people always think that everything revolves around them. For example, imagine you are discussing the poor traffic conditions in your city. People of this type might say traffic is not an issue simply because they haven't faced any difficulties in commuting. They might live in an area with convenient transportation, so they feel everything is perfectly fine. However, this can make you feel frustrated because you have to deal with daily traffic jams, congestion and time wasted in commuting. Additionally, when you share with them the good news about your new job, they can overshadow your happiness by talking about their unhappiness with their current job. It feels like they take away your joy and replace it with their job-related grievances. They may appear indifferent or envious of your success, which can diminish the excitement and joy you want to share with them. In both of these cases, it's their lack of empathy and willingness to listen to you. They may not realize that their actions can undermine happiness and connection in the relationship. It's important to find a way to discuss with them respectfully and try to understand and share your emotions sincerely to improve the relationship and communication. From now on, even if you are becoming the center of attention, your friends now control the conversation. Now everything revolves around how they feel. 
It seems like what you think or feel is no longer important. Will you always stand by someone who only cares about themselves? If so, do you trust yourself enough to ask them to change, to care about us too? Remember that if you try to help someone become better but they don't want to, they won't change. But if you're trying to improve and those around you are negative, they may hold you back. The best thing may be to stay away from such people, people who don't want to learn or change. Stoic philosophy teaches us to understand ourselves better and always strive for progress. However, some people do not want to acknowledge their mistakes or make improvements. They remain stagnant and often blame others for their issues. Trying to help them can be challenging because they may not listen or accept advice. For example, Nick is someone who never admits when he's wrong, even when he clearly makes mistakes. Instead of taking responsibility for his errors, he always looks for someone else to blame. This shows a lack of responsibility and a reluctance to face the truth about oneself. Next, Abraham receives feedback on how to improve his work at the workplace, but he ignores it and confidently believes that his way is always the best. This demonstrates arrogance and an inability to accept constructive feedback from others. Abraham may need to change his attitude to thrive in his job. Mike struggles with repeated emotional issues but always finds a way to blame not meeting the right person instead of examining his own behavior and considering change. He comforts himself by blaming others. This may prevent him from gaining a deeper understanding of himself and improving his relationships. Finally, Frank often faces financial difficulties, but instead of planning a budget or saving, he blames his job for not paying him enough. This reflects financial irresponsibility and a lack of personal financial management skills. Frank may need to change his approach to improve his financial situation. In all cases, taking responsibility for oneself and self-reflection are essential. Stoicism, a philosophy focused on aligning with nature, building strong relationships, and taking responsibility, can help people gain a better understanding of themselves and how to improve their lives. By embracing these teachings, we can embark on a journey towards a more meaningful and harmonious life aligning ourselves with the universe's grand design. This path requires a resilient mindset, much like the Stoics of old who exemplified such strength. Let us recall our discussion on the 10 types of individuals we must steadfastly avoid in our lives. Above all, let us maintain our unwavering faith in Stoic philosophy and our relentless pursuit of personal growth to access a wealth of valuable Stoic wisdom and receive updates on new content. Remember to click the subscribe button below. Please take a moment to like and share this video, spreading the principles of stoicism and contributing to the creation of a purposeful community. We sincerely appreciate your support for our channel. Continue your journey towards becoming a better version of yourself. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you in our upcoming videos.